Hi Floss Tube. My name is Jody and I'm Trixie Tricycle here on YouTube and on Instagram. And this is my channel about cross stitch and some yarn stuff, knitting, crochet, um, collecting vintage memorabilia-ish from the sort of 60s, 70s, uh, and curator of odd memories from that same time period, <laughs> an occasional movie quoter. Um, so welcome. And I, uh, today is Wednesday, May 12th. It's a little bit after one o'clock. Um, it's been about two weeks since uh, my last video, which was my second video. And I am overwhelmed. I just want to say thank you to all of you for watching and for commenting and for um, reaching out on Instagram and for all of the other floss tubers who have so generously given me shout outs and um, I'm truly humbled <laughs> and, and honestly pretty surprised. I think I still am in this mode of no one's going to watch this. So this is just for you. You're just making your <laughs> little videos. And uh, all of a sudden there's a whole lot of you that sh that showed up and uh, and it's really, really fun. And I'm so glad that I decided to do this. So uh, today we're going to do some, I'm going to talk about some, on the cross stitching side, some starts. I have some works in progress, um, some plans. And then um, what most people lovingly refer to as haul um, or some things that I have acquired. And we'll talk about that more. Um, and then uh, last video I said that if we got to 500 subscribers that I would do a giveaway and now we're over a thousand so I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple. <laughs> what? Uh, so yeah we'll do a we'll do um, the, we'll come up with a good name for it but we'll come up with a um, something to share uh, at the end. I have a few things um, set aside. So first of all, though, I wanted to um, clarify or, or to sort of correct a couple of errors. Um, as you know, and as I've mentioned before, I am pretty terrible at Instagram and navigating through that app and the tab that shows where other people have tagged you. That was like a mystery. I never noticed that until well after my first so, actually after my second video um, and then there were these like the little notifications in there and I realized that I had missed after my first video um, the fact that uh, Memphis Sarah and I'll put her um, YouTube channel and her Instagram link she actually shouted me out in one of her videos right after my first one and I didn't even I didn't see it I didn't notice it and so uh, Sarah, thank you so much. She does have a very cute, in fact, I had watched her video. <laughs> Not the one with me in it, but she's very entertaining and she's got great projects and she's super sweet. So, um, yeah, so please go watch her. And then now that I am like, you know, super into actually knowing when I get tagged, because I'm like a pro, uh, this time when... Um, Michelle, Mama Loves You GB, mentioned me a little bit in her video and then she tagged me. I actually saw. So um, she, her most recent video, she, I think she's at her mom's house and she had a photo behind her. See, it doesn't matter which side because it's not my photo. I can point at whatever and I am doing it correctly, right? <laughs> if this is the first time you watch me, I'm very challenged with which side I'm pointing at. Anyway, um, but she, there's this beautiful photograph of her and her black lab Enzo um, that she said that she lost about six years ago. And he's so, it's, it's a really good picture. And so it reminded me, I had to show you, um, uh, we had a black lab. In fact, we've had two, but the first black lab that we had, her name was Anka. And this is, this is Anka. Um, we had her until she was 12, 
and I don't know if you guys can see that. I know there's a little bit of reflection. And then there's me with her sitting on um, the dock in front of a, a boathouse that I used to, I, I row. I used to row. I still row, but it's, rowing, rowing happened. <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, that's, those, that's me when I was like in my 20s with my dog. So anyway, Michelle, this is a, this is my little shout out to Enzo and um, I'm sure Anka and Enzo are having a good time wherever they may be. Hopefully they're sharing some good sticks. So, um, also Audrey, Audrey, not Ashley, Audrey, who is Stitchy Witch 42 commented on my video and I was so proud of myself because I had just watched hers and she, she had a birthday. And so I was like, thank you so much. Happy birthday, Ashley. And her name is not Ashley. It's Audrey, clearly. So I apologize. Um, and then, of course, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are here um, due to the amazing kindness of um, Brenda and Laura. Um, of Brenda and the Serial Starter. So I actually happened to be at work. <laughs> I was kind of, I had my phone and I was on kind of a break and I was looking at, you know, just watching. And all of a sudden I looked down and that my screen name, my, you know, Trixie Tricycle name is on, <laughs> it's on a, on a note card on my phone. And I'm like, so Thank you so much for trusting me with your audience and for um, for doing that. And Brenda, both of you, I, I just want you to know, and I'm, you know, everybody has expressed so much um, support. And anytime I feel like anybody's going through something difficult, from my early observations, this community is pretty remarkable. So I do um, want to offer, you know, from our little home here. Um, love and strength and whatever it is that you guys or that you need. Um, so anyway, I did think it was entertaining when there was a little discussion about the pronunciation of my, of my, uh, YouTube name. And the first time, my very first video, I talked about where that name came from. So Trixie Tricycle was, uh, the name that my dad came up with for, kind of the little he hero of these bedtime stories that he would make up for us. And then when he would travel for work, he would send us little actual comic strips. Yep. I'm trying to keep everything balanced here. It's, it's a tough job. I gotta, gotta set up. Um, this is this is one of the original cartoons that my dad sent us and they it this is like one of my treasured possessions obviously and it is so cute the little chapter one of trixie the tricycle trooper look at her little t-shirt look at her like curly braids and the bow on top of her head we won't go through the whole thing but um i would like to point out this action shot <laughs> look at to the rescue Trixie tricycle to the rescue I love my dad my I have the greatest parents we're not gonna talk about them right now too much but anyway um I thought that you guys would get a kick out of seeing that and I think a lot of people kind of do the same if there's a little confusion around um I don't know what it is. Like, I know that in, I have the same screen name for, um, like my, um, uh, Blizzard accounts, like video game logins, um, which I play some video games, my husband and I both do, but, um, so if you're ever online and you're just, you know, having a conversation with somebody and they, they're, they try to like figure out just from your screen name, and something about the way that it's all together makes it kind of tough to read. And so that, that thing,
thing that Laura did at first where she said try, you know, she, she said tricycle, but then she said tricycle, and then Brenda was like, tricycle. <laughs> like, so, but to be fair, in Laura's defense, think about this for a second. We have this weird thing in the English language where, like, why is it bicycle and tricycle, but it's motorcycle and unicycle? So there's sickle and cycle. Bicycle. Motorcycle. Arlo Guthrie actually immortalized that dichotomy in a song where he mentioned that he did not want a pickle. He just wanted to ride his motorcycle. And also... That he didn't want to die, he just wanted to ride his motorcycle. Cool. <clears throat> I'm here all week, folks. So I thought we'd go through a few comments and questions because some of you guys are hysterical and I, I really need to cover a couple of those things before we get into the stitching part. One, um, people asked about where, um, and I'm realizing I'm far too far away from the things that I need to reach. So I'm going to adjust that briefly here. Um, a couple of you asked, because I failed to put a link in, um, of where I got the tags, these adhesive tags that I showed you guys for the DMC storage system that I outlined in my at the beginning of my last video. So I will put a link... Um, right down at the top and I did add it to my um, second video in the details so it's there too but these are the ones that I get they come in these strips I think that the order comes in a quantity of like 300 they're not that expensive but um, this is what they look like and the the trick is that they've got that large opening and then they're round on the top uh, so that see those seem to work um, pretty well some of them come with like a little square top or some of them come with like a little hook and the holes a little too small so this one actually should um, these are the ones that I used and so I'll put that link down below you know I'm not selling anything it's just that people asked I guess I was reluctant to put them up the last time too because I didn't want it to be like you know hey you know direct people toward a certain thing but I realized as I went back through and looked that's one of the only types that um, I think it might be the only one that's actually like that so anyway the next one, um, Colleen commented that uh, when I was talking about covering your um, magnifier with a with a cover, she said that her alarm company actually called her. Um, she wasn't home, and they had detected smoke in her living room, and it actually was her magnifier lamp that had started to burn. Um, and they caught it soon enough, which is good. But you know, so thank you for sharing that. That's always, uh, you know. Pro tip, cover up your magnifier because the sun will do a number on it and it can start fires. Um, someone suggested today that I, I ditch the, the mounting board. So we'll, we'll see how that goes today. I'm, I'll just try and hold up my projects instead of trying to like put them on the board and then hold them up and get the floss and all that stuff. So we'll try to keep that a little bit less involved and maybe that would, you know, that'll help us not have to be quite so labored in our sharing of the <laughs> projects. The reason I did that initially is because I one of the most important things to me is to make sure that the color on our, you know, on the fabric and on the flosses that you can actually see that. So I'm trying really hard to make that um, a priority and I found that having something to back it makes that a little easier. So we'll see. I'll, I'll do it as, as we go along. Um, Diane called this 2 by 4 <laughs> that I use um, for stretching my... She, she called this... So, so I'll show you guys again. This is the thing that I use for my DMC when I'm winding up um, each of the skeins so that I can get the correct lengths in between these two construction nails. I just pound it into this 2x4. She called it my 2x4, my uh, 
2x4 floss sizer of death, which means that I have to keep it forever now and probably stitch a label for it and call it the 2x4 floss sizer of death. Um, but then Padma came in with the math and with the logic and said, you could have made your floss winder board 15 and a half inches and then just cut the loop on one side and your floss would still be 31 inches long. This goes to 11. Padma's right. <laughs> she said, and then it would be easier to store too. That's good thinking. I didn't do that good thinking. Anyway. Um, the last thing, so many of you guys, and this has been, this again, this has been one of the funnest parts of this whole process. Uh, my comments have been full of people like, oh my gosh, I totally remember those XYZ, whatever it was that I mentioned, whether it's gum wrappers or it's, you know, um, the beanbag ashtrays. Um, stitching with the sister lease. <laughs> I don't know if it was Colleen or Cheryl, but one of them commented and said that they totally remember that and that their, I think it was their grandmother who they never wanted to ride in the front seat of the Rambler because she had one of those beanbag ashtrays up on the dash with the, in the cigarette butts with like the lipstick. I'm, I was reading that and dying cause I'm completely relatable, but, um, anyway, so a lot of people, I really love when you guys come back with, I remember X. Um, it's just, you know, obviously there are a lot of things about that era. Um, not, not ideal <laughs> by any means, but sometimes just those little detail, like the aesthetic details of stuff that was in you know, your grandparents' house or stuff that, you know, your parents had around or different music or lyrics or, um, and I don't know if it's because I'm getting, I'm getting to the age now that I remember my grandparents being when I was a kid. And so somehow, you know, this, that's the whole, like, we're getting a little too deep into the whole brain. I just think it's, you know, I enjoy sort of going back and listening to those memories and you guys are bringing up the exact same stuff and I think it's really, really cool. So Cindy B <laughs> said something about those that she's like, oh my gosh, those asteroids. And then she comments it again and she goes, you know, eBay has a lot of those old beanbag ashtrays for sale and I immediately had to go onto eBay. <laughs> they had one brand new in the package. That's so gross. Like just, what? So you guys can see this fabric. This is what I was thinking of when I had that houndstooth. And it is that kind of yellow, but obviously, and my husband remembered it better than I did. It's, he's like, I thought it was plaid. And I was like, I don't know. It just reminds, like, yes, it's, it's, it's that. So here is what it looked like. And this was, I just, I'm dying. Can put most anywhere. Weighted bottom base. <laughs> Yuck. This thing's so gross. Anyway, so this is pretty entertaining. Hang on a minute. I'm dropping my stuff. Hold, please. Now I'm out of order. It's always going to be something with you, Joe. All right. Okay. I think that's it for comments. Um, thank you again. Keep them coming. I love them. I will do my best to continue to reply as, as best I can to as many as I can. Um, it's hard for me. If I'm on an off day, 
like if I'm if I'm not working it's easy for me to reply relatively quickly if I'm at work sometimes it's gonna take me you know at least till the next day before I can kind of get to my computer and be able to go through them um, okay so I don't have any uh, finishes for FFOs today uh, because I've been kind of working on May stitching and so let's go ahead and go into starts um, with I think I talked about how my May plans were going to be that for each weekend in May I would be starting one of the four remaining uh, Magical Mystery Tour Beatles charts by Blackbird Designs. I already had Blackbird and Eleanor Rigby completed and showed that in a one of my last videos. So um, the first one that I started for that first weekend was Strawberry Fields Forever. And this, let's try this and see what it looks like with just this. So there it is. That's as far as I got. And I did my Instagram I showed that I did make a little error because I was watching a movie when I did the first set of bricks and there it's fine so this is fun I've never done a strawberry border before because um, I've really barely done any borders before but I really like this and it's coming out kind of cute so this is stitched on 32 count um, honey by bestitch me um, and I I want to say really quick too I'm in Brandy's color or uh, her fabric of the month club and I said last uh, that I had gotten, you know, quite a few um, 32 count and that I was hoping to maybe like request to see if she would, you know, in the next couple of months, just because I know they got to order ahead and, but maybe I would be able to get into like a 36 or 40 count. So I emailed her. She got right back to me and I am, she already switched it for me. So Brandy, thank you. That's amazing service I really appreciate it and so I'm going to be getting more of her luscious beautiful fabric and 40 count from now on so um yeah it's great okay uh the next one let's see if I can so this weekend the start was octopus's garden and I think this is so cute it's such a cute little chart I love it So this is progress that I made. This is on 32 count tarnish by Picture This Plus with the called for flosses. And it's picking up a little greener than it is in person, but that, that kelp right here, while I was stitching that, it just, you know, we live in the, so in, in the Seattle area, if you've been here before, um, you know, you're familiar with what Puget Sound is. If you haven't been here, <clears throat> the Puget Sound, Washington State basically has, um, <laughs> I don't know how into this I went, basically it's an inland body of salt water that comes in from the Pacific Ocean but it's not open to the ocean. So we don't have that typical wave action that you would have out at the beach, out at the, like at the Pacific coast, which would be more of like an Oregon or a Washington coast thing. So the C Seattle sits on Puget Sound, which is more of just a flat body of water and it gets white cappy and it gets choppy. But <clears throat> there is this really distinct in, in the summertime, especially when it warms up a little bit and in the morning, there is a very distinct quality to the water. It's this dark green, liquidy beautifulness that um, if you've been here, you know. And if you've been on that water, spent any time on that water, um, it's just something that's sort of so, so the Puget Sound is the salt water portion of it. In Seattle, we also have a body of water called Lake Union, which is kind of just north of the downtown core. And then we have a lake, and I think it's about 25 miles long, and it's called Lake Washington. And that runs between the Seattle um, 
the city of Seattle runs all the way up and over to the east side where Bellevue and Redmond, like where Microsoft is. And, um, but it's a large, again, flat, freshwater uh, body of water. And in between Lake Union and Lake Washington is a passageway called the Montlake Cut. And the Montlake Cut runs through um, the University of Washington campus. And there's a bridge uh, that runs over it. I'm probably going to put in a photo of what the Motley Cut looks like. And every year they host, University of Washington hosts a, a rowing race there called the Windermere Cup. And it is, it's a, you know, they have, they invite different national teams to come and race against the University of Washington's fastest men's and women's boats. But then the community also will enter different events um, on a limited basis. And so, And that is a really common area for people to do a lot of training. Um, growing through the Montlake Cut is, you know, if you're a rower and if you grew up anywhere around the Seattle area, you've done a lot of work in the Montlake Cut. And so when I very first started, this is another, this is another thing that I that I did before I really ever got started. I think I I hadn't even ordered a chart yet, but I just had some DMC and I had some fabric, and I decided that I would start to sort of maybe do some freehand stitching. I had no idea. But this is a start. I still need to finish this. But this is just, it was like a little impressionistic version <laughs> of the Montlake cut. And so that's that's my little bridge. You know, I tried to put in the little bridge trusses. Can, is that focusing? Yeah, there we go. And I tried to make it sort of like a sunrise, you know, because that there's also this really distinct set of colors that happens here with the mountains and just the combination of the water and it's these really kind of remarkable pinks and oranges and yellows and anyway while I was stitching octopus's garden for whatever reason that kelp got me kind of thinking about that and the fact that now that people are you know being able to sort of start to get out and to do more things a lot of the boat houses and rowing you know in the rowing community in Seattle they're able to start getting back out and, and doing just like everybody starting to be able to get out and do the things that they love and that are important to them and you know I I I hadn't realized how much I missed it so anyway I it's I'm really looking forward to being able to get back out on the water long story longer Okay, um, I haven't, I didn't do anything on uh, Honey Bunny. I put that on Instagram that I'm still, still need to do a little stitching on it, but I also am working on a plan of how I want to have that finished. And so we'll show that next time. Um, today we'll just kind of move, move on through. So the next one uh, that we'll talk about is Ann Logan. And uh, that's by Christina, Whilst Iris Naps. And here's where we are. So I, I think the last time I had done um, from here up, and I had a few of the top, I had this border up here, and I had a few of the top letters. And so I've been working on those, those upper alphabets. So still super fun, still making progress. And I'm doing this during the week. Um, the weekends I'm keeping to the Blackbird designs because it dovetailed really nicely into that uh, Blackbird design weekend cell that Brenda and Laura are hosting. Um, so I, I'm kind of doing like the extended every weekend <laughs> cell because if there's something good, I just need to do it even more. Uh, the next one was Lindy Stitches. This is the Funky Menagerie Mystery Stitch Along. And all four parts of it have been released now, so here we are. Look how cute! So I finished that um, 
did the, I think it's an armadillo and the cat and that cute penguin and did the mantis and I sort of started working down. And this is on um, Iris. I think it's a 32 count Iris Lugana. And is that under the sea? I, uh, I'll put it in the description what the, um, who, who dyed that fabric. All right. And then this is the one that I, I probably spent the most time on, on during the week. Uh, since the last time that I recorded. So this is G. Leger, 1898 by Rothlade Wa. I'm doing this on uh, 36 count Haunted by Picture This Plus. <clears throat> and the last time, oh gosh, it's so big, okay. So so since the last time I came over here and I did this, the vine for that border, I did the bottom, I guess the top, the top string of the bottom border of the scallops, that line across, and then started some work on the house and the shrubs in front. It's so beautiful. I mean, not necessarily my stitching, but just this pattern is so beautiful. Um, I wanted to point out that if you are going to be starting this, uh, really pay attention to the chart for these scallops along the top because they're not even like for some of these if you look in between there's going to be six stitches and then there will be three right like right there there are three but this one there's four and so after the fours like basically between those two there's only six stitches but between the fours and the threes there's seven just follow the chart. I didn't, and I kind of, I started initially, I forgot about this when I showed you guys this to begin with, but, you know, you do like a couple repeats and you're like, oh, I got this, and then you can just kind of autopilot. No. <laughs> so I started going back and I was trying to put in the, the blue parts of the scallop. I'm like, why is this not fitting? And then I looked more closely and realized, oh, I gotta go back and frog it. So. Uh, that happened early on. I blocked it from my memory, which is why I didn't share it with you the first time. But can we um, talk about... Oh gosh, I'm just really... Hello? This house? Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. Anyway, it's coming out pretty nicely. I'm really enjoying it. Alright, so that is all my works in progress. And I am swear I keep dropping this thing. We're gonna get this sorted. Probably gonna pause you here for a sec. It's me grunting as I bent over. It's attractive, that's what happens. When you get older, every time you like stand up or sit down or get in a car, <laughs> get out of a car, there are noises that happen. It's like, uh. Mm. It's not cute. Anyway. Um, so, plans. Is that what I wanted to do next? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be continuing again the the remainder of May. I'm going to be working on and I don't know if I'm going to finish Gila because that is a lot of stitching. As I got into the house and I started to do the shrubbery and everything in front of it and looked at that roof, I'm like that is a tall order. I mean, it's already the 12th and so I I I thought I thought a couple weeks ago I was like, "Yeah, I could totally do it." I don't think I'm going to be able to finish that. Um, I'll still plug in away on it, definitely, but um, I am going to start on uh, the second to last and the last weekend of May. I'll do a start on Long and Winding Road and on Yellow Submarine. And the two that I showed you, Octopus's Garden and... Um, there's a lot of ums today. Octopus's Garden... <clears throat> 
and strawberry fields forever I think that's as far as they're gonna get this month and then we'll just kind of keep them in the works in progress rotation uh, there are a couple of stitch alongs that I'm gonna be participating in and I'm really looking forward to those one came up from uh, a floss tuber that I started watching she's I think she has three or four videos na now and her floss tube is called stitch again Sam and again I'll link that and she was talking about this Emma Congdon book it's kind of, I'm kind of doing a little pre pre purchase like a haul bit but this is one of the things that I got in between the last couple of days and this is a really cute book it's not super duper my style except for this one chart well there's a, there's a lot of super cute charts in here um, but Sam is doing this as a she, she's pretty cute she's like I'm just doing this and maybe somebody else will want to do it with me as a stitch along so she basically started a sal and she's like, I'm just doing it by myself. So I was like, I'll jump in on that. So this pattern is like super, super cute. It's got like little, oh my gosh, I'm really struggling with the camera and where things are going today. So what she's doing is she's kind of tackling one section of it each month. It's pretty much full coverage. I mean, there's a few spots where it doesn't have any stitching on it. But um, she's calling it the Seasonal Earth Sal. The Seasonal Earth Sal. Um, so Sam, I'm in. If you, uh... anyway, that was kind of cute. I think that's going to be fun. And then this Friday, the 15th, Saturday? Friday? Friday's the 15th. Um... We'll be starting the uh, Joan Sands. The hashtag is going to be Joan Sands Mania Style. And that is um, again, this is the one from Jacob. This is the Modern Folk Embroidery Hogmanay Sampler. Um, so Nikki Noodles and Betsy Klager and uh, Laura um, and also um, Curling Stones and Cross Stitches, yeah, Curling Stones, uh, we're all going to be starting that one. And there is a hashtag and it's Joan Sands Mania with a Y Sal. Um, every, every time I say something like this, every time I put a, like a, a link or mention somebody, it's always going to be, I'm going to put it over here, probably this side. <laughs> One of the sides will have a written thing in it that I will add because I did figure that out. So, uh, but then you can look also, I think uh, Betsy and Nikki Noodles will have that um, on their Instagram. And Curling Stones and Cross Stitches mentioned that this is a great idea. So Hogmanay is, I didn't know this, but I did learn that this is a New Year's Eve reference. So if you're Scottish, I'm sorry. I'm learning. Um, so the suggestion was that we uh, put in the last few stitches of that sampler in on the last day of the year, which I think is great. So this will be fun. It'll be a long, you know, but the, the thing that's neat about this is how similar this is to, um, especially with the eyelets and just kind of the setup, um, but the these two charts. So I think I'm going to try to get frames that are, um, that will match so that these two samplers can hang out and Joan and Anne can be sampler wall besties. So works. And Jacob and Christine are like two of the nicest people on the planet so you know obviously their reproduction should hang out together too. Um, and speaking of how awesome Jacob is this is gonna roll kind of right into uh, the whole stash gathering component of my video today. 
Um, his most recent floss tube, he released a couple of new charts, which are, of course, as always, beautiful. Um, but one of them that he is doing is a, a collaboration with Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts. And she has her store Evertote. Uh, and the model of the chart is being stitched, was stitched by the inimitable Ellen Reed of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. And uh, so Caroline is providing, she, she's selling the uh, Leo and Roxy flosses that are, that Jacob kind of curated for this particular chart. Um, and it's called, this is the chart itself. Um, let's see if we can make this bigger. Maybe not. So, oh, that's not going to, that's not going to do. Okay, so this is the, um, this is a larger photo of that chart. And this is Jacob's, one of Jacob's new releases. And it's called Rule of Life, a Quaker inspired design. Bestow your alms whenever you see an object in necessity. It's so pretty. Look how beautiful that is. So this is the chart that um, Caroline, uh, you can purchase it from her store, which I'll link. And you can also um, buy it directly from Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery. And on Caroline's store, you can either order it as a PDF or you can order it as a paper chart. And so um, that's what I did. So I'm waiting for it to arrive. And then she does have the floss uh, set for the Leo and Roxy flosses for the chart that you can also get. And right now they are um, back ordered. So she is ordering more in. And, uh, and so they'll be arriving later this month. But the thing that Jacob is doing with this chart is that he is donating 50% of the proceeds of all the sales, um, both on Caroline's site and on his site for the chart, just the chart, but 50% um, of all proceeds are gonna go to charities related to the current escalation of the COVID crisis in India. Um, they are in super rough shape right now. And so he and his husband, he said in his video that his husband is Indian. Um, so it's something that's important, you know, to them. And he, um, there's an organization that collects contributions um, for different humanitarian aid groups in India. So he's going to take a look at which of those he wants to donate to. And so anyway, that's a very kind thing. Um <clears throat> So anyway, that the my order's on back order, so I won't be starting that. But I did get this. Um, and this is another pattern that you can download from Jacob. And this is called the Peacock Tree. And it's a really simple, beautiful chart. It's kind of Byzantine, you know, it's got that Greek key. But in the description, I thought this was sort of appropriate. Um, the mosa It was basically based on a, a mosaic. Um, peacocks were a very popular theme on mosaics. One of the images I came across showed a peacock perched on a branch, which became the inspiration for this piece here. Peacocks, or rather peafowl, have spoken to the imagination of people for centuries. The male peafowl is the national bird of India, from where it likely made its way into Persia, and from there was imported into Europe. Many legends surround this bird, and it's seen as a bird of resurrection and paradise. So I just think it's, it's timely, and uh, so I think that I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to stitch it and I'm thinking about using this piece of uh, 40 count mint with this Gloriana floss and uh, I think it'll be pretty so 
I'm going to probably get started on that. And um, anyway, Jacob, you're amazing. We love you. Thank you for doing that. And thank you for making beautiful charts that we can all stitch. All right. So I've been thinking about, you know, what to call, I, I think a lot of people just refer to this as haul. I could do that. But of course, then I always have to think about like, you know, do I want this to be something that's more, you know, do I want to come up with like a very personal, you know, like I, I've personally curated or I've personally gathered, harvested, edited <laughs> these purchases, or do I want it to be more kind of sterile third party? You know, these are. possession augments or aggregations of items. I don't know. I kind of just settled on this is some stuff I got. So we're going to call it that. This is some stuff I got. And I didn't do this uh, in the last video. This, this video, hopefully I'm keeping it somewhat you know, we're already at 50 minutes. This is something my husband would lovingly refer to as a 90 minute jazz odyssey. <laughs> oh, well. So we're going to start with a love letter to Lindy Stitches. Um, if you've ever ordered anything from her store, you know that she is on it. You order, you get a confirmation email. It goes out almost immediately. You get it really fast. When you get it, she's typically drawn a little animal, look at that cute snail, and said, hi, Jody." So you get a little personalized drawing, courtesy of Stephanie, hopefully while wearing her paint pants. If you haven't seen her new video, go watch her paint pants video because I had to watch it three times and I cried laughing every single time. But not only that, you get all this, you know, you get, you get the speedy delivery, you get the awesome service, you get the drawing, and then you get candy. She sends you candy and it's flavored like coffee. Okay. She has new charts. And she showed them in her video. And it's this. Look at it's her fourth annual bird chart. And this is called Tread Softly. But I being poor have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. It's beautiful. Look at those stars and look at that cute owl face. I love that. And those flowers. And I ordered the, um, the flosses, some of them. Because I think there's some DMC also, but I did order the her little floss pack that goes with that chart. And I also got her cute Mermaid's May pin book. So there's little finishing instructions on here. Look at how cute! Look at how cute! And the fishies and the little flowers. And then um, I also got this Lady Dot Creates. She also sold this in her store, so I got the finishing stuff to go along with it. So it's this beautiful shallot velveteen for the backing, and then this grubby frog little ribbon from Lady Dot Creates. Look at that cute green. Anyway, so that's what I got from Lindy Stitches. Thanks, Lindy. You're the best. One more thing. And this actually I got last month. 
um, the one of her other bird samplers was Edna <laughs> and it, you got to look really closely but Edna's little she's got those little hairs on her head I don't know if you can see that go to go to Stephanie's site go to lindystitches.com and look at this chart because it's so cute but Edna's she's eating her orange so so stinking cute but I also got the thread pack for that um, mostly because I just like how she ties it up with that little bow you know, you can, you, can, you can get them, but aren't those pretty? This one had the option of ordering, like, the project bag that goes with it. Oh, I don't know if she's got any more of these, but this was done by the 805 Stitcher. And look... Look, it's like binoculars. Look at the binocular girl. I think it might be the only project bag that I have that I didn't make. I really went on a project bag making tear for a while. And I get into these moods too where it's like all of a sudden for like a week that's all I do. I just make project bags. I'm feeling one coming on, although I want to get through May before I sort of relapse into Project Meg world okay um another thing that I got after the needlework expo and I haven't showed you guys yet is this cross stitch calendar by the primitive hair and I could pretty much it I mean there's so many designers that you just want to like stitch their entire arsenal of charts and there's just not enough time but I have done at least one primitive hair I did midnight which uh, it's not up there today um, but this calendar and I can't really open it up and show you the insides because it's just all the charts but um, the back she's got a preview there of all of the different monthly charts and they are so pretty so I've considered actually doing this instead of doing them on the little pin pillows which are fun to do but I'm thinking about maybe actually doing it all on one piece so it's just like a wall hanging calendar maybe um, and you know, she's got the beautiful fabric that she makes. It's usually a, I think I finally figured out what it is because I was like, these look the same to me. This is pretty, pretty close to the same dye, you know, but it's different thread counts. So Old Salem is the 30 count and I, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Old New England is the 35 count, but it still looks, it's got that same kind of antiqued gorgeous I, Ellen Reed would call it grotty I love that word and then old Massachusetts is the 40 count which is probably what I would end up doing that on and just make it real small but have the whole all all 12 of those together so I'm thinking about that that would be down the road at some point I don't really have firm plans but I did buy them and those fabrics I had kind of collected over, you know, since last year when I first discovered that those were a thing. Okay. Next, this is going to be like a whole set. And I realized as I was looking through some of these other charts and some of the stuff that I had started to kit up, <laughs> there's, there's a theme. Because I love dogs. And I noticed that many of the samplers that I choose have dogs on them. It's fortunate that there's a lot of samplers with dogs, but I don't know that I really have very many that don't have dogs. So, and this actually is kind of a work in progress because I did a little bit of a start on this. Uh, I forgot that I had done this, but before, hmm. 
I want to say even before Christmas last year, and I think I got sidetracked with those Barbara Anna pillows that I'd made. But this is Teresa Kogut, Pet All the Dogs. And um, here is where I had gotten to. And this was just put away in a project bag. So I did a little bit. That's on 35 count tin roof. And I got most of that border, the upper part of the border. I'm leaving the one side open as per suggested in case I make mistakes. But then I started to kind of move down here and, you know, map out. Somebody called it scaffolding. I think that's a good way to refer to it. Just like the sort of, you know, the scaffolding of the chart. But this is something funny that I, I remembered when I found that. This is one of the first project bags I made and it's got this cute dog um, pattern on it. I don't know if you caught that, but uh, yeah, they're upside down. Look. That was a good, I always say that the best way to learn something is to make a mistake because then you tend not to repeat it, hopefully. So yeah, make sure that you pay attention to which direction your fabric is before you stitch it down. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few more um, charts that I actually have kind of kitted up and ready to go. And, you know, they're big, so it's going to be a while before I kind of get to all of them, but I have Louise. Again, a reflatus lie. And look, there's a dog. There's a dog and a donkey. I also have Albertine Bourgeonie. And there's a dog. This one's really beautiful. This is a GGR chart. Emanuela Cianello. It's an Italian sampler. This is an interesting chart. I'm really going to have to spend a little time uh, planning this one out because there are some uneven, it kind of looks like, uh, you know, the, some of the stitches are like instead of over two threads by two threads, it's like, it's like over three by two, so taller than they are wide or, and each of these four lower um, little vignettes actually are part of this much longer bit that's here. So to get them all to tie together, you, you need to pay attention to the chart. And so I'll have to go in and do that. But there it is, the dog. That dog's coloration is kind of like Charlie's because he's got that white with brown and black. And Louisa Barney, which has not only a dog, it has a cow. And look at that border. Ooh. I love that one. And finally, this monster chart. This thing is huge. I can't remember how many stitches across it is by how many stitches, but look. Oh, that's a dog. So maybe before I turn 60. I just turned 51. What do you think? It's goals. Stitching goals. All right, so now we're going to come to some uh, stash enabling that other folks did for me. And this is going to bring me to a couple of um, 
Actually, I'll do these first. So there's a couple of people that I wanted to um, just kind of shine a light on a little bit and encourage you to go and check them out. And I'm going to kind of put them together in the same category because they're doing something sort of similar. I don't, they don't know each other, but um, they both spell their first names that, that end with I. So I, basically they're twins as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm kidding. So these are two new floss tubers that are, are kind of running parallel tracks right now with their craft. Um, one is, um, Jenny Stitching Simply, and uh, I'm going to put that down. She's done a few videos, and her, her floss tube starts kind of cute because her son, Roman, is, uh, you know, I think he's in high school. I think he may be a freshman or a sophomore, and he was home injured and got a new video camera, and her first video opens with her saying, when I woke up this morning, I had no intention of making a floss tube video. <laughs> so her son kind of talked her into, said, yeah, we're doing this, mom. You watch a lot of floss tube, and so we're going to make this. But he um, does a beautiful job um, filming and editing and adding little, you know, it's really, really fun to watch. But what she is doing in her most recent video that she recorded um, she shows how she has reduced her crafting footprint down into a smaller, more curated collection of things that she really feels, you know, she's getting it down to just the things that she feels like she needs um, to, to do her stitching simply. And it's really, I, I love watching that. It's sort of aspirational because I have a disaster of excess right now. <laughs> fine it's fine but I, I do like um, just watching how people organize and store things creatively and so Jenny um, and she also does some really really beautiful stitching and it's it's really neat to watch her so she's the first one and then the other one is someone who actually is lives geographically really close to me and we um, are making initial plans and, and we also sort of found out that we actually know some of the same people, which I just, the it's a very small world. Um, and I don't know if it's that we just coincidentally run into people that, you know, I mean, I don't know how many people live in the city of Seattle, but there's a lot. And uh, for the two of us to just sort of know some of the same people really, really well, and we've never met, but um, stuff like that just happens anyway. But she started stitching not too long ago. In fact, it was after the, the beginning of this year. And she was asked by a friend to stitch a chart for, um, because she did, you know, sewing, she knits, she crochets. She's a really, you know, very good yarn art person. Um, and was like, I, you know, she just did this cross stitch thing. And then she was like, I guess I'll, you know. I may or may not like it, but I'm going to finish it for this friend. Then she found out that she enjoyed it, and so she's been getting progressively more into it. And she started a floss tube channel. I think she's got four or five videos now, and I she's very dry and she's very self-deprecating, which she doesn't need to be because she does some really beautiful stuff. And she also um, collects vintage things, and she's whittling down a craft space. Also, she went into that in her video um, that she put out yesterday. And so she's just very selective about the things that she's continuing to keep. And and we have very aligned um, tastes in things. So her name is Kelly, and her channel is Minimalism in the Making. And so I'm going to put that in there as well. And so I would encourage you to go and say hello and... Um, hi, Kelly. <laughs> So this, the next one is kind of along the same lines, and I actually put a photo of her on my Instagram. She, she's super sweet. Her name's Claire. Claire's channel is Stitched Lit, like Stitched, L-I-T. 
Um, and she is doing this. She's doing the engraver's chart by um, Hello by Liz Matthews. Hello from Liz Matthews. Sorry. And so I pulled some fabric and floss. This is a 40 count Americana froth. And then this is a, a set of dinky dies. This was actually a stitchy box. Um, had some exclusive floss left over from one of their um, mystery boxes, I guess. And this, uh, so I don't know that you can get this, but I had like four skeins of this, and so I think it will be perfect. But it's called Vintage Newsprint. And it's kind of a bluey gray charcoal with a little bit of like white sort of flex. And so I think it's going to actually be really pretty with this for that chart. And the piece, this piece of Americana froth is actually big enough for me to get that chart in because it's big. Even with 40 count, it's big. So I'm looking forward to that. Claire um, does a lot of live stream floss tubes. So she, and it's really neat. She likes to be able to have her community there, with, you know, so that they can chat live as she's stitching or talking or showing people. And it's a, she, you know, I think that that's important to her to have this sort of community gathering. Um, and YouTube has some rules around whether or not you can do a live stream from your phone. And you have to have a thousand subscribers in order to be able to do that. And she's really close. She's just, a, you know, maybe a couple hundred away. Um, the last time I looked this morning. So, you know, she, she um, has been using recently her husband's computer just to record and put some stuff up online. But um, anyway, she's she's got some really pretty stitching. And um, she also does, she just finished the um, Owl Forest, the dinosaurs chart. So go see Claire. She's sweet. Give her a little subscribe and let's try to get her to 1K because then she can do her live streams from her phone and that will make it much easier for her to stay in, in touch with her community and with us. And so. uh, Almost done. This um, Jen Lee Quirks and Stitches is stitching on it. Or she's stitching this and I saw this pattern and was like, I need that. It's called Numero. A Jeanette Douglas design and I just really like it. So I got the little embellishment you know buttons and stuff that goes with that so and then the final one I'll show you today this is Emily Harbin this is again whilst Iris Naps and Nikki Noodles is stitching this and she referred to it as the don't be a bloody hypocrite chart. <laughs> Whatever you dislike in another person, take care to correct in yourself. Noted. I shall do so. Okay. We are at one hour, 11 minutes. So we're going to, we're going to do some shares. I have three to do today. Nikki, uh, not Nikki, Nisi Lynn calls these shares. I was consulting the thesaurus before I came on today. And I put in the word gift. What are synonyms for the word gift? And a whole bunch of things came up. But one of them, and I've never heard before, you know how I like words. spelled L-A-G-N-I-A-P-P-E and it's pronounced Lanyap and apparently Lanyap is a it's kind of a geographically um, bound term for a tip or um, an unexpected boon gift but it's kind of based in it says it's based in like southern Louisiana and maybe southeastern Texas so can someone from that area, like maybe comment if that is in indeed the case. I think that's just a really cool word. Lanyap. Anyway, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do some giveaways and and with the um, Blackbird Design Weekend Sal theme, um, I thought that I would share some of my Blackbird charts and. 
three different times now I have purchased the same, I purchased a chart that I already own. <laughs> I'm like, I love that chart. You already have that chart. So I'm gonna share those with you because I don't need to. And because they're really good charts, which is why I bought them twice. So the first one I am going to share, um, and I'll do a drawing for this in two weeks. I'm trying to, think. what's that date gonna be? Okay, I'm gonna draw for these on May 23rd, Sunday, May 23rd, because there's a window of days in between that Sunday and and Wednesday, which will be two weeks from today. Um, that depending on my work schedule, I will be filming, editing, and putting this stuff up. So I'll leave this open until the until Sunday, the 23rd midnight before the 24th. Um, so if you want to enter any of these and you watch this video and it's you know before the 23rd, then go ahead and and you can put in the comments below. So please be a subscriber um, if you don't mind, and uh, you don't have to like my video. I mean, you don't have to push the like button or anything like that, but if you, it'd be great if you would subscribe. And then um, uh, be 18, because I'm going to have to ask you for your address. This is what the, all the other floss tubers say, right? And then I'll mail it anywhere. It doesn't matter. So, um, But don't use the word giveaway in your comment, because that tends to draw the, the bots and the trolls and the people that don't cross-stitch that just want something that they'll never use. Okay, so first one, this is from the, um, every time, uh, this is from the Garden Club series, and this is Honey Bee. And this is the one that's like split and stitched on two different fabrics and then sewn together. I think some, I saw somebody that was doing this as kind of a friend chart. You know, you could, one of you could stitch one and one could stitch the other and anyway. But this comes in a set of 12 charts. The Garden Club is a set of 12 charts and so you can see some of the other ones over here that have been put together. It's a really pretty set. It's a neat series. So if you want to win this, uh, go ahead and use B, just B E E in the comments. That's the first one. Second one is going to be Midnight Ride. Um, and because it's really hard to find right now, one of the called for flosses is Onyx by Gentle Art or the Gentle Art. And so I'm going to include a skein of the Onyx floss as well. So if you want to win that one, you can enter or say the word midnight. Um, this is also from a series. This is from the Anniversaries of the Heart series. And this is pattern number 12. So this one has the bonus chart on it as well. But this is Elizabeth Jane. So it's number 12 in the series, the final one in the series, and then it also has the bonus pattern. So <clears throat> the bonus pattern is called For Those Recorded Here. I thought this was interesting. I was reading this, and this is actually based, um, this was for Alma's great-grandmother, Emily Jane, Mo or Elizabeth Jane Moffat. So it was her mom's grandma. Elizabeth Jane is Alma's mom's grandmother. And there's a sweet little story in here. I love another thing that this is that this process the floss tube has done has made me really read a lot of these blackbird charts, and it's they're I love them. They're really sweet. They have a lot of just that sounds really dismissive. There's a lot of depth though to it to each of the um, of course of course they are. <laughs> you, you can't be this creative and make this level of beauty without having a broad and amazing scope of what life is about. So let's go ahead and say Jane 
just use the word Jane, J-A-N-E, if you would like to win this. And you can use B and Midnight and Jane. You don't have to use them in a sentence, just include them in your comment. Um, and so you can, you don't have to like choose which one you're entering for. You can put all of those words in, but you'll only win one. So if you, you know, if you win the B, then I, and, you, and then you end up winning the midnight and I'll just use the random comment picker. Um, but, but then I'll go to somebody else if, if you get two of those. So it'll be one winner per chart. Um, I think that is everything that I had to show you today. Again, thank you so much, and um, please go and visit some of those other nice people. I feel like um, I have been given, you know, an opportunity by some really incredible, kind people um, to get to talk to a lot of you, and so um, I just would like for other people to be able to enjoy the, sort of the same attention that you guys have showered and I just I'm so grateful so anyway um, I'm going to leave you with a little <laughs> a little retrospective if you stick around through the credits so anyway have a great um, couple weeks and uh, be safe out there and be nice to each other and have a happy day Bye. Hi, Floss Tube. My name's Jody. And I'm Trixie Tricycle on YouTube and on Instagram. <clears throat> Hi, Floss Tube. My name's Jody, and I am Trixie Tricycle on both Floss. Why is the hardest part the first five words? Hi, Floss Tube. My name is Jody, and I am. It's gonna be fucking great. Hi Floss Tube. My name's Jody and I am Trixie Tricycle on both YouTube and on Instagram. <clears throat>